Hello and welcome to Sarastro's Painting. In this video I'll be sharing my approach to painting Bo-Katan and the Clan Kree's Mandalorians from Atomic Mass Games Star Wars Shatterpoint. Here's a quick summary of my approach. You can see that I've assembled and primed the figures as detailed in Episode 1 and I also chose to go with the helmeted version of Bo-Katan. I'll begin the painting by providing all of the main base colours and I'll once again be doing a bit of speed painting for the areas of silver coloured metal to save time. I'll then be adding some highlights where I'll be enjoying plenty of scratchy textures and chipped weathering inspired by the look from the Clone Wars and Mandalorian TV shows. For the finishing touches I'll be sharing a nice easy method for painting the fiery rocket blasts before painting the bases along with the various small lights on the outfits. Let's begin. I'm going to begin by creating a dark grey using a mix of graphene grey and black. I'll then use this to paint the inner suits on all three figures, taking care to avoid the surrounding armour where possible. I'm also painting over these little straps. I'm also using this for the boots, once again avoiding the armoured plating. You can see I'm batch painting all three figures with the same colour, but you could vary things up by using some blue tones here too if you like. Next I'm painting all of the belts using brown leather, darkened and desaturated with some black. And I like to clean up any mistakes as I go. For all of the grey or silver areas I'm once again using a 2 to 1 mix of Griff Charger Grey and Basilicanum Grey just as I did with Ahsoka Tano. I'm now coating the lower legs then using a damp brush to soak up some of the excess leaving a nice bit of shading. This also works well for the holsters, blaster pistols and the jetpacks. Naturally I'm leaving the areas I want to be blue. Once again you can see I'm working quite quickly and taking care to soak up excess paint from the areas where I don't want it to settle, such as the top of this helmet. Here's how things look once dry. You could also use a speed paint for the blue areas if you wish, but I'd like a bit more control over the colours here, so I'm beginning with a base colour made with an equal mix of Canterbrick blue and violet. Because I want the armour to have a pretty weathered and chipped appearance, it's okay if we don't bring the blue right up to all of the edges. I'm sticking quite close to canon with the colour scheme for Bo-Katan, but being a bit more free when choosing which parts of the armour to paint blue for the others.
Next I'm using pure black to paint the visors. And I'm also painting the central symbol on Bo-Katan's helmet, along with a small ring of notches. Notice I'm simply leaving the swirly design grey. I'm now using Nakar to paint the white part of the helmet, taking care to avoid the indented markings. Although I'm aiming to be pretty neat here, it's okay if things aren't perfect as we'll be adding some chipped weathering later on, and there's also only so much detail that we'll be able to read from a standard gaming distance. For this helmet I've thinned some nacar down to allow it to flow into the recessed design, followed with a little tidying up. I'm also using Nakar for these side panels. For the strip at the rear of the helmets I'm using graphene grey but just stippling the paint on, leaving a rough area of chipped highlights around the edges. And here I've just thinned the paint down a little. With the base colours complete, let's now add some highlights. The main area I'd like to focus on here is the blue armour. For that I'm going to be adding increasing amounts of white sands and Caribbean blue to the base tone. When applying the highlights I'm looking to create some rough and scratchy textures, inspired by the look from the Clone Wars. Along the way I'm also using a pale grey to add some chipped weathering and scratches, especially for the edges. I might use a few different shades of grey here. I went back and forth a bit with the level of weathering on the helmet. I'm now pushing the blue highlights just a little further, and I'm highlighting the others in exactly the same way.
Next I've decided to add a few highlights and some scratchy weathering to the rest of the armour, once again mixing a pale grey using white sands and graphite. We can also add some simple edge highlights to the blaster pistols. Here I'm just strengthening some of the shadows with the contrast colour. To highlight the belts I'm lightening the dark brown base tone with some Morocco and then some white sands. and once again creating some nice worn and scratchy textures. We can go pretty bright for the edges. Here I'm adding my white sands. And finally, I'm adding some gentle highlights to the dark grey inner suit, simply working up to graphene grey from the black and graphene grey base tone. I might go just a little brighter by mixing in some graphite to help articulate the hands. And to further help with the definition, I'm using some pure black to add a little black lining. With the highlights complete, we're now ready to add some finishing touches. For the rocket blasts, I'm starting by providing a pure white undercoat to any areas I want to have a bright, fiery tone. This means the initial blast near the top, but also in the more recessed areas further down the smoky plume. I'm after fully opaque coverage here at the top, but don't mind if the white runs mainly into the recesses in the more smoky section. I'm now going to apply the fiery colour on top, 
starting with a pale yellow mix of white and sol yellow for the initial blast, and I'll then be using some fluorescent red towards the lower half of the smoky trail. So I'm now painting the top of the blast with the pale yellow. Next I'm using the fluorescent red for the lowest section, once again letting the paint flow into the recesses. And here I'm using a mix of the two colours for the middle section. Once that's completely dry, I'm now using some graphene grey to begin adding the smoky colour on top. I'm initially applying this with quite a large brush, and more or less dry brushing the paint on to allow the glowing fiery tones to remain in the recesses. I ended up applying the paint quite thickly here. This already looks pretty good. It's up to you how much of the blast you'd like to cover with the grey, and you could really stop at any point you like. I've chosen to go in with a smaller brush and push back the fiery colours a fair bit more. I also decided to create a bit more volume by adding some rough highlights to the smoke by mixing in some graphite and some bearing blue. I'm once again using a large brush initially, before going in with a smaller brush to refine things as needed. Notice that the inclusion of a little blue here helps create some contrast of colour temperature against the warm fiery tones. And here I'm using graphene grey mixed with black to add some depth to some of the shadows. Next I'm painting the bases, where I'm mainly using graphite, followed with a dark grey or black for the recesses. And here I'm lightening the grey with some white sands, and doing some dry brushing to sharpen the edges and create some gentle gradients to add interest. I then did a little optional refining, and some sharpening of some of the edges. And for the patch of earth I'm using a mix of scale colours brown and orange leather tones. I'm now lightening this up to orange leather, And here I'm adding some Morocco to create some rough highlights. As usual I like to paint the rims of the bases in black, which may need a couple of layers to achieve a nice flat finish. And for any little lights on the outfit I'm using some pure white, followed with some bright fluorescent tones.
I'm trying out these super bright pigments by Hera Models, but any brand of fluo paint would work well for this. I'm simply mixing the pigments with a little matte varnish. As with most fluorescent colours, these are pretty translucent, which is why we need the white undercoat to achieve their brightest expression. I'm now mixing a pale yellow to add some coloured highlights to the base of the rocket pack to show the light being caught from the blast. And I'm now adding my last couple of refinements. And this completes bo and the Clan Kree's Mandalorians. Thank you for joining me, I hope you found the video useful. As usual, you can find full product lists in the video description, along with links to all of the places I can be found online, including the various social media and music platforms. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Shatterpoint. Happy painting!